Good morning, everyone, and welcome to church on such a delightful Sunday morning. We're so glad that you're here. We're going to start our service by singing our opening chant, God is All There Is. Here we go. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, everyone. So nice to see those of you that are here in person. And welcome as well to all of you who are joining us here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science via Zoom and Facebook Live, which is so glad to be able to get together, however <laughs> we join together. So uh, just a reminder for those of you who are here, if you could just make sure if you have a cell phone or anything that might make noise during the service to make sure that is silenced. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. So now let's join together in prayer. Turning our attention inward, knowing that truly God is all there is, that that life of God, that vibration of pure love and infinite creativity and intelligence, health, wholeness, every form of well-being is the vibration out of which all creation comes into being. And it lives and moves and expresses itself throughout all parts of creation. That nature of God lies at the center of all, including each of us gathered for this service today. And so I absolutely know that God is unfolding and revealing its nature throughout our time together as a vibration of love that we feel in coming together as a community, as that givingness of spirit that flows through all of those who are part of our service who give of their time and love and talents today. I know that Spirit is inspiring us through our music, flowing through Sam and Karen and our soloist, Harold Payne, this morning. And I know that the perfect word of the divine, that message that awakens us to our divine nature, is spoken through Dr. Mark. That Dr. Mark is that channel through which we get to hear exactly what we need to hear to remember and step into a fuller expression of our divine nature. And so I'm giving thanks right now for all the blessings that I know we receive throughout this service. And in gratitude, I release this word knowing it is so. I let it be. And so it is. And together we say, Amen.
gifts of God are in my life. I am blessed. So now please rise and join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so now let's join in our congregational song, Make a Joyful Noise. Make a joyful noise. Lift your voices to the sky. Make a joyful noise to your source and your supply. Celebrate as one, grateful for this time we share. Celebrate as one, unified as we declare. God is love, God is peace, God is joy. So, this is a time in our service where we get to meditate. So, for the next five minutes, I invite you to just get still in your chairs, to close your eyes, and to silently repeat the mantra, God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. Just silently repeat that over and over, and I'll bring us out of meditation in five minutes.
the bravest man in the universe is the one who has forgiven first the fighting cannot end when each one takes revenge and peace will never come to the hearts of everyone till we break the chain Howard, thank you. All right, good morning. Welcome to church. It's wonderful to have you here. I'm so happy you're with us. Uh, whether you're here in person or you're Zooming or Facebooking us, it's good to be with you. Um, Henry David Thoreau, who was an American transcendentalist, you know, the transcendentalists are people who believe that God is found in nature. Uh, Henry David Thoreau said, many men go fishing all their lives without knowing that it's not fish they're after. And, uh, and I thought about that a lot. I thought a lot about that a lot because I think so often I have chased things that were not uh, 
that important, but at the time I thought they really were, uh, only to achieve them and realize, well, that was useless. Why did I bother thinking that was important? I'm going to talk today a little bit about this idea of being a light in the darkness. You know, many scriptures say that God is the only power, but how many take that really, really literally? See, because the science of mind teaching does. We believe that God, that spirit, that love, that consciousness, the infinite mind is the one and only power. See, because, but what I th observe is that the teachings of most religions are that there are two, that there's God and, of course, the devil. And the one power is good. That would be the God power, uh, for those of you who are taking notes. And the other is not so good. And so, you know, we often see a battle of God and the devil fighting over who will win. I remember as a child going and seeing artwork like in museums or galleries or things, and it was often religious artwork depicted this battle between the good and the not good. Um, lots of images of the light battling the dark. Now, I think people see uh, disasters and things that are happening in the world and say that it's the work of the devil or when something horrible happens. And a, a person takes the the wrong path in life, and you hear, oh, the devil led that boy astray. Yep, or people sometimes make God responsible for their evils, you know. So first of all, in the science of mind, you have to get that God does not create evil, right? God is the one power, the only power, the all power, the all good power, the good to which there is no opposite. Okay, so that's at the big absolute level. And down here in Humanville, we're dealing with the appearance of opposites, right? But we say God is the one, one power. Now, you and I both know that an all good power does not send forth evil, right? It's just not possible. The all good power to create, you know, per to permit or tolerate evil, that's just crazy, right? That, why, how could that be? So religious science, our teaching is a mental and spiritual science. We operate according to universal spiritual laws. And there can be no exceptions. The laws are the laws are the laws. No exceptions. The spiritual healing principle is that God is love. God is life. And that in him, there is no darkness at all. By him, I mean him, her, it. Okay, you get that. All right. So if you and I think that God produces sickness or is testing us or even knows about how sick we seem to be or the challenges we are having, we've lost the possibility of producing a healing. See, God does not know about our belief, our experience of separation. God only knows us as our most pure, perfect, loving self because God made us out of itself. So if you think God produces the sickness or sends you tests, I want us to think about letting that idea go this morning. God does not give tests, okay? That's like high school, right? Yes, there are lots of troubles in the world, but do we as students of truth, think that they're from God? The answer is no, absolutely not. You know, if you multiply two by two and you get five, the problem is not in the principle of math, right? You say, well, the math is just such an you know, un 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 unreliable principle. No, it's not that. The problem is in our working of the principle of math, right? So in Genesis, in the Bible, it says, God saw everything that he made, and behold, it was very good. Now, God did not make a devil, and even if he did, it would be good. So when I was young, younger than most of you, I'm sure, um, Flip Wilson had a show on TV that we loved. My brother and sister and I, every week, we could not wait for the Flip Wilson show. And he had this character that he would do. You know, who knew Flip Wilson back then, an early purveyor of drag, making drag OK on TV. And Flip Wilson had this character, Geraldine. And Geraldine was famous for saying, the devil made me do it. I mean, and you would see it on t-shirts and posters. OK, this is like probably the early, the late 60s, maybe early 70s. I don't really remember. But I remember that character. And I remember Flip Wilson. And I love Flip Wilson. I thought he was just hysterical. But he really typified something that was in the race consciousness of the collective. And it was that you know having something else to blame, someone outside of us. Oh, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. The devil made me do that. You know, I did not just pour hot coffee on top of you because you're working my last nerve. You know, that was the devil that made me do that. I, you know, or whatever it is. You know, oh, I didn't say that. The devil made me do it. It was such a wonderful way to not take responsibility for things, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, like, wow, I wanted Geraldine. I do. I wanted Geraldine. But the good news is, the good news is there is no devil outside of you. 
right? That's good news. The bad news is if there is a devil, it's in your mind, right? But the good news is if he's in your mind, you can control it, right? And the bad news is if you don't control your mind, watch out because the devil will. So you get how this goes. You get how this goes because the devil is the misuse of the one power. That's what that is. So God never goes anywhere. God never loses our file, although I have certainly been convinced of that sometimes. I have really thought, wow, you have really lost my file. I am not on the program anymore. So we have to seek to dwell in that secret place of the Most High. What does that mean? That we have to make some kind of spiritual contact with the higher power. If we are, you know, if we are doing that, I believe that no evil will come nigh our dwelling place, as the scripture says. You and I have to remind ourselves constantly throughout the day to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Now, I have dwelled on all floors, I'm here to tell you, and there are many floors that go very low, um, but the secret place of the Most High would certainly be the most upper floor, that place of our most loving, elevated consciousness. We want to fill our minds with God is all there is. One infinite power of love. Not just on Sundays, every day, all day long. So imagine with me, if you would, what it would be like if we all raised our consciousness, our thinking, uh, to this place of God loves us fully and completely. That the way God looks at us is that we are the beloved of God, just like God is our beloved. Now, if, God, if you are the beloved of God, God wants you to have everything that would add to your life in a healthy, happy way for your growth and unfoldment. I believe that that is absolutely true, right? So why do I need to make up a devil? You know, God only intends my good. You know, knowing that every moment God is present, that love is here right now, just waiting to be revealed, waiting to burst forth into expression. You know, um, so before the beginning of the year, um, I got word that my nephew, my sister's son, who I'm very close to, was, uh, is in the Air Force, and he was being going to be deployed for at least six months to Qatar. And, um, you know, and so you get that news, and you have a little process with it, like, ah! You know, and when you go all over the place with it and go, okay, calm down, calm down, calm down. I am a spiritually minded person. I know what to do. I don't have to panic about this. <gasps> okay, what do I have to do? And so I sat down. Okay, how am I going to handle this, right? Because I'm, I'm having a response to, this has nothing to do with me. My nephew is going to serve in Qatar. But I'm having all this re reaction, right? So I sit down and say, God, how do I handle this? And the first thing that came to me, honestly, came from a book I'd read uh, about Joel Goldsmith or by Joel Goldsmith, one of the spiritual writers and uh, teachers that we like here. And he said that in the Second World War, he had been uh, sent in and he thought to himself, how will I handle this? Because here I am studying healing work. I'm studying one God. How can I go with an armed rifle into battle? And so his response to this was, I will know every day that God is right where I am and that there is no enemy, that there is as much God in them as there is in me. And that's what he would focus on. And he made it through the entire war and never had to fire a shot. So I thought, that sounded pretty good to me. So I'm going to know that there is no other, that beyond all the appearances there, and so, and I would get occasional little uh, text from my nephew, and he'd say, oh, I'm out with this Qatari family in the middle of the desert, and we're having a barbecue. <laughs> you know, they, invite, they wanted me to come meet their kids because they saw pictures of my kids and blah, blah, blah. And so these wonderful things would, would unfold, but I'd have to keep coming back to this place that there is, no, and, and I get it, this is very, this is difficult work to say there is no enemy. Because for all intents and purposes, it looks to us like out in the world there may be enemies, right? But to come back spiritually to that place of there is no enemy. See, there is no power in effects. And where the enemy appears to be is at the level of effects. 
But there's no power apart from God. God is the life of all being. And a consciousness filled with the realization of God as the only power cannot fear anything. So that's my work, to fill my consciousness with such a realization of God that I now know there is nothing to be afraid of because God is, in fact, all there is. You know, all metaphysical teachings seem to teach God as one. It's in Christian science. It's in divine science. It's in unity. It's in religious science. So we all sort of agree on this. So here's the key. I think that we have to stay spiritually alert, in other words, all prayed up, to not accept the false propaganda that's being fed into the world, into the race consciousness all the time, whether it's on the internet or the newspapers or TV or radio, whatever. You know, there's just all kinds of crazy stuff out there. And you know what I notice is the more crazy stuff there is out there, the more crazy stuff there is out there. It just seems to grow, right? And so I can't be... Uh, I can't be pulled this way and that way by all the information that's coming at me constantly. I have to be anchored and centered in a spiritual truth because then the information that comes at me, I can measure, I can hold it up to spiritual truth and say, is this a fit for me? Is this something I need to be concerned about? How do I deal with this spiritually? So spiritually alert, as in all prayed up. You know, when we know God is the only power, that power is always flowing through us. So if you've been treating for protection, I have to ask you, do you believe that there is a destructive or harmful presence, you know, a power out there that exists somewhere that we have to seek safety from? See, when we understand God is one, when we dwell in that secret place of the Most High, you know, when this fills our consciousness, I believe we know we need, that there's nothing to be protected from. Because wherever I am, God is. In its fullness, in its allness, God is fully present right here. And we dwell in that omnipresence, right? So there is but one. And because of the nature of that one, there's, there's no outside influence from either good or evil, right? There is no presence or power to which, uh, to, which to pray for any good that does not already exist, you know, because the good that God has created already exists for all of us. So in our periods of communion, when we become still, when we meditate, when we sit quietly and reflect, we feel the infinity of God's presence, of God's power. That's why we take that time, you know, in the morning to just be still for a few minutes and say, you know what, I, my tank is full. I am filled with the God presence, with the God power, because there's nothing else, right? God is one, and there cannot be, you know, uh, an existence separate and apart from the one. So no power outside of us is acting upon us uh, separate and apart from our own being. And as we become more conscious, more aware of the nature of God, the nature of prayer, and the nature of our individual being, we understand that, that we are the offspring of God. That means the qualities and the attributes that exist in the infinite mind of God exist in us, even when I think those qualities are not there. You know? So I'm in a situation and I say, boy, I really need to be loving here, and it feels like my tank is empty. Well, God is present within me, and that means that love is there. So there is a deeper resource that I'm giving myself credit for. You know, so I think if we say, all right, there, if the, so here's where I come up with, that in the scriptures it says, son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. That's an extraordinary promise uh, for humanity, you know, that everything has been given, and that it's God's good pleasure to give us everything in the kingdom. You know, mysteries all through time have known God as one. The mystics have, excuse me. And, and so the Hebrew mystics taught, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God. See, people often say that the Hebrew people were the chosen people. Uh, I believe the Hebrew people were the chosen people because they were the people who chose one God, starting with Abraham. They were the people who said one, not all these different gods, a God for this, a God for that, and this and that. No, one God, one God. See, God is not present in a healing and absent in a not healing. God always is. This is what we have to get. God always is. And God can only be absent from our belief. And sometimes I get very convinced that God is absent. You know, I get in a situation and I get all caught up in my own thinking, and I start going on a trajectory that is not for my highest and greatest good, and then I realize, oh, it's not that God's absent, it's me. God hasn't gone anywhere, I have. You know, but at, 
as humans, it seems that we believe most often in two powers, that we see lots of effects in the world. We see you know, war going on and poverty and weather and fires. And so often, human consciousness is a house divided against itself. It sees good and it sees evil. Here are all the things I love. Here are all the things I hate. Here are all the things that I'm in favor of. Here are all the things that I'm against. But you know, I always come back to this statement by Ernest Holmes, where he said, I want to be a person who's for something and against nothing. But to be a person who's for something and against nothing, I need to know what is it that I am for. I mean, if I'm just going to be really for something, what is it I am for? And I decided, you know, I'm for God. I'm for love. I'm for all of us together. I'm for everybody moving forward in a healthy, loving way. You know, we don't want to give our power away to anything or anyone external to consciousness. That would be idolatry. So what difference does it make what the appearance is if God is the only power? It's all just God in different forms, different forms. So you know, I loved, uh, Ram Dass was a very important teacher for me early on. And, uh, and still today, still today I get value from, from the work that he wrote. Um, and I remember him saying, so Ram Das came from an Eastern tradition, a Hindu tradition, and he had a guru. A guru is a teacher. And, um, and he had uh, a, a, a quite a relationship with his guru, with his teacher. And when he would see someone out in the world who would tempt him to not be his most conscious self, you know what I mean? You know, when he would see someone and he'd maybe be critical or want to be a little judgy or this or that, his reminder to himself always was, oh, that's just my guru in drag seeing if I'm really doing the work. And I thought that was just a fantastic thing because it's all God. It's all God. And so it's like, oh, here's God in a different costume. Can I see that God is there even in this wild costume? Because that's, what we're, that's really what we're all doing. You know, in, um, in Zechariah, in, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, it says, not by might not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. So the, to, to the degree that I know my life is God in expression, to the degree that you know that your life is God in expression, and it's all unfolding exactly as it should, and yes, your consciousness helps to shape how that continues to unfold. You know, okay, so my life is God in expression. To that degree, I'm alive. To that degree, each of us are alive. To that degree, each and every one of us are a light in the world where there seems to be a lot of darkness, but we know that darkness is just an appearance. Let's pray. So we turn our attention inward now for a moment to become still together. Bring our attention to the pattern of our breathing. So simply notice that you're breathing in and out. And just be with your breath for a moment. Just breathe naturally. Don't try to control it or anything. Just breathe. And as you're breathing in and out, know with me that right here where we are, God is. That we are surrounded and filled by an infinite power, an infinite presence, an infinite love, the good to which there is no opposite. And in this awareness of our connection with God, I know we are also all connected with each other. That the Spirit of God in us is the most true, real thing about us. It existed before we got here. It exists long after we leave that we are emanations of the Most High. And in this awareness of our oneness with God and each other, I speak the word for us today that each and every one of us, we know the spiritual truth that makes us more and more free. I know for each and every one of us that our lives are healed and whole right now, that we are blessed beyond measure, and that we have a heart and mind that is wide open to receive the gifts of God this day. I know that we include in our prayer today our family members and friends, our parents and children, all of our loved ones, everyone we hold near and dear, and we surround them with a light and love of God. We know that right where they are, the fullness, the allness of infinite spirit is there. It uplifts them. It heals them. It's the truth about them. And we let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we live in. So there's so much that pulls at our attention so much that convinces us that we are separate from God, we hold to the truth that in the midst of all that we see, spirit is present, that there is consciousness, that there is love, that there is healing and right action taking place, and all things are working together for a greater good. 
We bless our church and we bless all churches everywhere. We bless synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I know that we are blessed by being together in consciousness today, that there is an upliftment and an energy and acceleration of love that lifts us above any condition that no longer serves us. So I give thanks for this truth. I give thanks for us together. I give thanks for that healing power and presence that I know is God. And with a full heart, I just release this word into God's perfect law, and so it is. Together we say, Amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. Sometimes we feel we need someone to blame to help us through it. We even have the t-shirt that says, the devil made me do it. But deep down we know that God is all there is in thought, deed, and word. So we can go ahead and flip it and kick Geraldine to the curb. There's a burning feeling in the bottom of your soul that only your heart understands. Everybody's got a little love inside to give away. All you really need is a chance. Time is wasted. You don't have to wait another minute to let your dreams take you. When you were free enough to let yourself go It's okay to take a little leap of faith sometime or How will you ever know The world is waiting For you to share the gifts that you've been given It's never too late for a Shine on, oh, oh. 
Thank you so much, Harold. You can get Harold's music at Harold Payne, that's P A Y N E, music.com. So, yes. <laughs> Thank you. And how about our awesome musicians here, Sam and Karen? <laughs> okay, so. For those of you here in the sanctuary, as far as the donations go, uh, there are boxes in the foyer as you exit where you can drop off the donations. For those of you watching us online, uh, several ways that you can make your contributions. One is to call the church office. We'll be, <clears throat> excuse me, be here for 30 minutes after service to take your call, 818-762-7566, and you can make a donation via credit or debit card. You can go online, nhcrs.org forward slash give, and that takes you straight to our donation page where you can do a one-time, or you can also set up recurring donations, or you can text the word give to 818-457-3419. And however you choose to continue to support us, just say, just know how much we're grateful, and we just love that you continue to support us so we can con continue to support you. Uh, and just a reminder, we've been letting folks know that if you shop on Amazon.com, if you join Amazon Smile, every time you make a purchase, if you designate uh, Church of Religious Science North Hollywood as a charity you'd like them to give to, a uh, donation comes straight to the church. So yes. Um, I was sharing on Wednesday, I recently got my statement of uh, what was given this uh, past quarter, and I went, whoa, I love that. <laughs> All from the joy of shopping. Um, <laughs> so, prayer with the practitioner is also available. Uh, if you're here in the sanctuary, please come forward at the end of service uh, for a practitioner to pray with you. And uh, if you're on, watching us virtually, we can set you up with a one-on-one -on -one session with a practitioner for a prayer uh, on Zoom. So if you're on Facebook Live, just go to our website and get onto Zoom, and uh, we will connect you with a practitioner for prayer. You can also, at any time, send us a prayer request via email to prayer at nhcrs.org. Or um, if you're here in person, you want us to uh, notify our practitioners to pray for you, there are prayer boxes uh, where you can write a prayer request and drop them off. And you can also call the church office and option four on our phone menu allows you to leave a voicemail message. And we check those every day, every evening actually, and send the requests out to our practitioners. This coming Wednesday evening, once again, we'll be with Reverend Sidney. It's uh, Wednesday the 22nd, the service. So we start with a meditation before service at 6.50, and then the service itself starts at 7. And Reverend Sidney's topic this week is active faith from need to seed. Prayer responds not to need, but to the seed. Effective prayer means uh, training your head as a plantable seed that can flourish and grow in joy, wholeness, and abundance. Learn how to till the soil of active faith 
you are your demonstration. I think we heard a lot about that today. So if you want that reinforced, join us. I'll be with Reverend Sidney, and uh, we love working together. So hope you can be with us. <laughs> Youth Church is open. We're so glad that our youth are starting to come back. So 9.45 a.m. on Sunday, uh, kids of all ages. Uh, if you haven't been coming because you didn't think we were having the Youth Church, please come back. We're, we're open. Uh, feeding the Homeless, our love and kindness ministry will be feeding the homeless today. And if you're interested in knowing how to support this ministry, please go to our website for more information. Rising Strong Workshop with Reverend Sidney. Uh, that'll be on Saturday, so the, this coming Saturday, the 25th, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And this is going to be in person only. And it's inspired by Brene Brown's book, Rising Strong. And Reverend Sidney's workshop will be a practical and spirit led experience to lovingly explore the stories we tell ourselves about why we can or can't are or aren't, and the cost is $30. The Essential Ernest Holmes class with Reverend Sidney uh, will begin, it's uh, for 10 Tuesdays, starting September 28th from 6.30 to 9.30 p.m., and that's gonna be in person and on Zoom. Students gain a holistic awareness of Ernest Holmes' thoughts and come to see that many of their questions about applying the science of mind uh, teachings were addressed by our founder himself at one time or another. The cost is $245 if paid in full, $270 if paid in two installments of $135 each. And this class is required for anyone who is interested at some point of uh, moving forward with practitioner training. And we're inviting you to please, if you're at all interested in joining in the fun of um, hosting on uh, Facebook Live, it's relatively easy, it's a lot of fun. So if you'd be interested in joining that team, please call the church office and let us know. Zoom virtual patio, we continue to allow people to stay connected before and after service uh, on Zoom. So just know where uh, we start about 20 minutes before service and then hang out afterwards so you can stay connected virtually. And our Zoom meditation continues uh, Monday through Saturday from 8 to 8.15 a.m. For information on all of this or anything else that might be going on here at the church, please visit our website, nhcrs.org. And you can also sign up for weekly blasts and monthly newsletters. With that, I'm going to ask you all to please rise as we join in the peace song. Yeah. 
So please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I am living love. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.